Hello guys and welcome to my channel. I have an important announcement, so here we go. I hate painting blue! <sighs> the time has come. Hello Fairy Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to Heavy Contrast Marines and today is a great day indeed because we are painting Ultramarines let's get cracking As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of uh, Grazier Spray. And for the first step, we are doing an overall layer with Talasar Blue. The idea here is to create a blue undertone for our next step. So take your paint, apply it, and try to be as thin as possible. As always, work section by section, don't rush it, and once you finish a section, check out for undecided pulling and absorb it. Our thin layer of Talosaur Blue is now done, and I'm going to move into the second step. And for this I'm doing a mix of one part Ultramarines Blue and one part Talosaur Blue, and I want to apply this as our main layer of contrast paint. Again, I will go panel by panel, section by section, move slowly, and if, if I see too much pulling, like here, you can see that's an excessive amount of contrast paint. I will go with my brush after cleaning it, absorbing any excess where I don't want it. And moving on. Our layer of Talosaur Blue and Ultramarines Blue is now dry. And first of all, I just I just want to say I'm really sorry if I sound like I'm 
dying that's because it's true uh, funny enough after painting this base coat of blue i got really sick so this is literally killing me so i really hope you appreciate it so let's start first at highlighting everything using techless blue For the rounded parts, like the knee pads, I also like to do on top of the edge highlight and spot highlight with a glaze of the same techless blue. Just push the paint towards the point you want the lightest and probably do a couple of passes of this until we build a solid blue color. The consistency we are working with is something like this. Our highlight of Techless Blue is finished, I'm going to move into Lothen Blue. What I'm going to do with Lothen Blue is try to do the thinnest such highlight I can all around the model again. The key is making this edge highlight thinner than our previous one. Use the very tip of the brush. <laughs> Just try to make the thinnest line you can. I'm using my Raphael Zero here. This is my favorite brush for a tiny lighting. Again, as I did previously with uh, Techless Blue, I'm going to do a glaze smaller than the previous one. 
inside that one. Our highlight of Love and Blue is completed. I'm going to do another highlight using a mix of Blue Horror and Love and Blue. This is about two parts of Blue Horror with one part of Love and Blue. What I will do with this highlight is do a highlight that is as thick as our previous highlight, only concentrating it just in the most exposed edges, corners, And I will also do, in spot highlights on the knees and the rounded parts, I will do a dot just in the middle. This will be our brightest highlight there. We won't go any further. The highlight of Blue Horror and Lothar Blue is now done. Now I'm going to do the last highlight. This is a dot highlight using Blue Horror. And what I'm, I will do is just that, just dots in the most prominent parts of the figure. So, there. Also at the corners. It's very important these dots are as small as our previous highlights. So be careful, go slowly. With that last highlight done, there is much to rejoice because the blue is finished and I can move into something that is more fun to do. And for that I need to base coat a couple things. I will use Corax White to base coat all the rubber parts. I will also do his eyes with Corax White. And I will use Wraithbone to base coat the eagle on his chest. and also the trim on his shoulders. Our base coats are now done, and I'm going to start shading all the rubber parts. And for this I'm using Grief Charger Grey. This may seem like it's not doing anything, 
or not enough, but this will provide a cool tone and darken the white parts a bit, as well as giving us a pre-shading for black tempera to be more effective. While the grip charger dries, I'm going to move into Yanda and Yellow. We'll use this for his chest, eagle and for the shoulder trim. As you may have guessed, we are going for a very old school second edition look to it because, well, I'm old and that's what I like. The Grief Church of Grey is now dry and I can move to Black Temper for the same rubber areas. Just layer Black Temper all over those areas again, as you previously did with Grief Church of Grey. While the black temper dries, I'm going to do an extra recess shade on the yellow chest symbol using Goro Grand Affair. Try to run this just in the recesses. And avoid all of the upper areas. I'm going to move now into, into the rubber parts and first of all I'm going to highlight them using Fenris in grey. For a final highlight on the rubber parts, I'm going to use Ulfo and Grey, and I will just do a small dot of this in the middle of our previous highlight. As you can see, I also lined it up with our highlights on the leg, creating a very unified and satisfying effect. And I'm going to move into the yellow parts. For this, I'm going to edge hi highlight them using Phalanx Yellow.
Now I'm going to highlight the yellow using Dawn Yellow. And now for a final highlight on the yellow parts, I'm going to use white and I'm just going to do small dots in the most exposed corners. With our yellow now finished, I'm going to base coat all the leather areas using Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm now going to apply Black Templar over all the parts that we base coated using Me Mechanicus Standard Grey. As always, go slowly, section by section, in this case, pouch by pouch. Apply the Black Templar. Watch out for pulling. Be very careful around the armor. We don't want to mess up our hard work here. Once you have one pouch finished, move into the other, into the second one. While the black temper dries, I'm going to base coat all the parts that will be red, and I will do so using Flesh Tears Red. In the case of his eyes, what I like to do is start from the front of the eye, well, it will be lighter, and then the brush stroke in the back where it will be darker. Again, be very careful here. We really don't want to mess our highlights. Don't forget to do the casing of his gun. Our layer of Black Templar is mostly dry, and I will apply an edge highlight using Escape and Bright Dinge. And now I'm going to move into the next highlight on the leather, and that is a Storm Bermin Fur. What we want to do with this is the same edge highlight we did with Escaping Bright Dinge. All around it, we're going to try and get that line thinner.
our highlight of Stormbeam first done and then going to move into the next highlight. This will be Karak Stone. We want to do an edge highlight as thin as the previous uh, highlight of Stormbeam in fur, but just taking less space. Our edge highlight with Karak Stone is finished and I'm going to do the last highlight. This will be Screaming Skull and I will be doing small dots just in the corners of the piece. Place a very small dot in each intersection of highlights. With the leather done, I'm going to move into the metal areas. And first of all, I'm going to base coat them using Iron Break. This, of course, includes the body of the armor, of the, the body of the weapon, and a lot of details are all around the model. Small details that I will pick up with Iron Breaker. With the base coat of Iron Breaker now done, I'm going to move into the shade and I'm going to shade it using a mix of Black Templar and Contrast Medium. This is one part Black Templar and three parts Contrast Medium. I always say this in all my videos, but this is my favorite wash for steel. It's much better than Dune Oil. And it's just beautiful. Our wash of Black Temple is now dry and I'm now going to highlight all the metal areas using a Stronghold Silver. I'm just doing a simple edge highlight. With the metal work now finished, it's time to move into the two final details. Those are the red parts and the plasma glow. And I'm going to start with the red parts, specifically with the weapon casing. And I'm going to do an edge highlight, Evil Sun Scarlet. This will be our, our thick edge highlight. So do this, this edge highlight a bit thicker than the thinnest edge highlight you can do. We will now move into why rather red for our thin edge highlight on the red parts. Um, I haven't touched his eyes yet or any of the lenses or lights. I will do now. Don't do the uh, even so scarlet is not needed. I will just do why rather red.
his eyes what I will do is an edge highlight towards the front of the eye. The highlight of Wild Red Red is now done. I'm going to move into another highlight. This time is Fire Dragon Bright. I will do a highlight as thin as the Wild Rider Red, but concentrating it into the edges, corners, rivets, etc. Don't forget to also do the lenses and the eyes. Our highlight of Fire Dragon Bite is now completed. I'm going to move into the last highlight on the red part. This is Luganath Orange and we will do uh, our usual dot highlight with this. So just placing very small dots of this color in all the corners of the piece. Don't forget to do the lenses, a small dot. Just like there. And for the eyes, exactly the same, a small dot in the very front of the eye. To finish off any lenses, I'm going to take white and do a very small dot in the opposite corner where we place the highlights. Same goes for the eye. We are now moving into our last detail to paint, and that is the plasma coil. As you can see, I've kneaded it up with Corax white and I'm going to apply my contrast paint. It will be again then yellow. Once applied, be sure it reaches every corner. And then I will absorb part of the middle of the coil. Our coat of yen and yellow is now dry and I'm going to play, apply another contrast paint all over this. This is warp lining mixed with contrast medium. This is one part warp lining and one part contrast medium. Once again, once placed, absorb a bit in the middle with a damp brush, so the color is less intense in the center of the coil. Once we have our first layer of that mix of warp lining and contrast paint applied, even if it's a bit wet, I will go again with the same mix and apply small drops in each corner of the coil. As always, if you put too much, you can always absorb it before it dries. This way, the center of the coil will look uh, lighter and thus uh, hotter than the extremes, which is what we want. Now we're going to highlight the plasma coils. For this, I'm using the mix, 50-50 mix of dawn yellow and mood green. in the full coil in the middle and start reducing the area until you reach the end and just do a small dot. With another highlight on the plasma coil, this time it's pure dawn yellow, and we will do exactly the same, just reducing the area 
we highlight. So we go in the center almost up to the bottom and start reducing the area and this time we won't reach the end. And for our last highlight on the plasma coils, I'm going to use white. And I will just do dots of white in the top of the coils, like that. And with that last detail done, the model is finished. And what a ride it has been. I had an immense pleasure, believe it or not, painting this guy, especially pushing my limits with the edge highlighting, which I think, forgive me to say this, but I think it looks amazing. And as always, guys, uh, thank you for watching, especially this episode, which has been very special for me. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Well, guys, with this last marine, the first series of Happy Conscious Marines are done, and it's been an amazing adventure for me. And I would like to thank you, first of all, all my Patreons. Without their support, this wouldn't have happened as quickly and as regularly as, I, as it did. So, if you allow me, I would like to name them all past and present Patreons, one by one, in no particular order. Thank you. Kid Lenard, Kevin Sulas, Adam Mapleson, Brad and Fred Lett, Stuart Perry, Leonard Lindemann, James Clanton, Gearhead James, Mr. Chuchu, Emil Tsavnev, Adam Cooper, Julian L. Beetle, Kian Peterson, Kiarian Oumurthili, sorry guy, I butchered your name, Ewan Smith, Andrew Dyer, Mir Parks, Megan Reynak, Sean Kiddy, thank you, thank you very much. And also thank you to all the people that has been watching my videos, to each and every one of you that took just a couple of seconds of the time to watch what I make. Thank you very much.